The Badger 2040W is a hackable ID badge with wireless capability. It is powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico. It has an e-link display and buttons for interactivity. You can also connect it to I2C devices through a Quick or Stemma QT connector. I've already created a review of the Badger 2040W. See the link in the description. But one of the things that I explained was that it could be used as more than an ID badge. I created an app which could be used as a client to my Raspberry Pi Pixel server. This video is about the menu I created for that, about why I created it as a generic menu system and some of the design decisions I made. Even if you don't have a Badger 2040W, this may be helpful if you want to learn more about programming the menu system in object-oriented programming at using MicroPython. Firstly, I'll just mention the Pixel server this communicates with, as it's important to the explanation later. I won't go into much detail though. See my earlier video on my project page for the Pixel server listed in the description. It's a web application that allows me to set a lighting sequence on an RGB LED strip. I use it for a handrail which lights up the driveway outside my house. There are three settings that are relevant here. The first is the sequence, which is always required. The all off option doesn't require any more settings. But the rest all need a speed, a selection of colours, or both. I used a reduced set of options for this. In particular, I restricted the Badger 2040W version to only nine sequences so that it would fit on a single screen. As I said earlier, the Badger 2040W is a hackable ID badge with wireless capability. It's powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico. It has an e-link display and buttons for interactivity. And you can also connect it to I2C devices. I've already created a review of the Badger 2040W, but one of the things that I explained was that it could be used as more than an ID badge. The first thing I looked at was how it could be used as an easy way, low power interface to my outdoor lighting. In my early video, I covered how to make calls to the Pixel Server API. The focus on this video is the menu system, as shown. I'm going to explain why I created my own menu system, and how I created it in a way that was fairly generic, so it can be used for other systems in future. This is the first screen where the user chooses one of the sequences. There is a title bar, and then the options are shown as rectangles. The cursor position is shown by a bold outline around one of the menu options. The cursor is moved using the up and down arrows and buttons A and C. Button B is used to select the current option. The sequences are all off, which is self-explanatory, all on and flash, again self-explanatory. Then there are three chaser options. The first is a normal chaser where the colours wipe across the strip. Chaser call is short for chaser with changing colour, which means that the chaser goes across the strip with four pixels on and then four pixels off, and changes colour during the sequence. Chaser BK is a chaser solid background, which only has one block of colour going across the strip at a time. Rainbow cycles through the colours of the rainbow. Theatre is a rainbow theatre chase, with lights flickering across the strip. And finally, random chooses from any of the random options available on the pixel server. The second menu page, which is used for all except all off, rainbow and theatre, allows you to pick one or more colours to be used in sequence. The custom colour is whatever colour is set on the pixel server, for example using cheer lights, and is denoted by an asterisk. Grey is half white and is denoted by the tilde symbol, and black is with the pixel off denoted by a hash character. There is also a back button shown by two less than symbols, which is used to remove the last selected color. And there's an OK button, which the user selects when they've finished making their selection. The selected colors are shown across the bottom of the screen using a single letter for each color. And these are repeated as required, depending upon the number of pixels and the sequence chosen. 
This menu page allows multiple colours to be selected before accepting the choice using the OK button to submit that colour choice. The third menu page, which is shown if required, is used by all the sequences except All Off and All On. It is used to set the speed of the pixels. Because the actual speed depends upon the Raspberry Pi running the NeoPixels, it's represented as a delay time in milliseconds, which is added to the normal performance delay. Unless running at very high speed, there is normally minimal additional delay, so it's approximately the time between each update in the sequence. It is represented as a Badger slider, which is a custom class that I created. The menu system is implemented using object-oriented programming, the aim being to make the code reusable. So I created this as a generic menu. This diagram gives a generic overview of the main components of the Badger menu. Note that this is not a full UML class diagram. I've simplified it quite a bit and I've also shown some of these as being private attributes and functions, when in fact there is no such difference in their implementation in Python. Essentially, the page menu is created as a Badger menu class, which contains Badger menu items, which are the elements making up the menu. The Badger slider is handled differently, it's not part of the menu. The Badger menu then contains multiple Badger menu items, which are the rectangles shown on the screen. The diagram does show zero or more, but there wouldn't be much point in having a menu with no items that could be chosen, so it's important that menu options are added before it's actually used. The interaction between the program and the menu system is all through the Badger menu class, which hides the details of the Badger menu item. This is a form of abstraction, which makes it easier if that is modified in future. The menu system is far from complete. There are some features that are not available, such as the ability to use an image instead of text. It's something I thought may be useful in future, so I've created the init method, assuming it can be text, image or both, but not implemented the part for displaying images at the moment. Let's take a look at some of the code. If you're using a small screen, this may be quite small, in which case you can go to the source code on GitHub. See the link in the description. To understand the code, we can look at the top level Badger menu file. There are some imports, as well as the Badger 2040W libraries, I include the Badger menu item library. The init has a lot of options, but most of these are optional, which you can see have been set with default parameters. Basically, anything I thought you may want to set differently, I've included. So there is the option for a different pen color, font, etc. You can set the number of menu items using num wide and num high, and the start and end positions. And it will fit the menu into that area. The display parameter is needed as that provides access to the e-link display. The menu items variable is an internal variable that holds each of the menu items. These may need to be added separately using the code, in my case from main.py. One thing to note is that I have set the font to be bitmap 8 and the font size to be 2. I did experiment with other fonts, trying to use a thicker font for highlighting, but I decided against this. I'll explain this later. The draw method is called each time that the menu is to be shown. This handles the positioning by ordering them by column and rows, and then calls item draw method, which is here. And this calls the Badger menu's items draw method. There is of course no point in calling the draw until you've actually got some menu items to draw. So this is where the add item method comes in. Note this takes optional arguments for the font and the font size, etc. If not defined, then these take the default values from the menu. It then creates an instance of the menu item class, which is appended to the menu items. The last part will set the first ever instance as currently selected menu item. And then here's the methods for setting and moving the menu position and for getting the reference of the selected menu item, i.e. which option has been selected. I won't go into these in detail, they're fairly straightforward. 
Note that there is no wraparound. If you try and go outside the menu, then it stops. One thing I did think about adding was the multiple pages, but I wanted to keep this as simple as possible. There are some other helper methods that I've not shown here. They handle things like converting from the menu position to XY coordinates on the screen. This is the Manager Menu Item class, which creates the individual menu items or boxes on the screen. You'll see that in addition to the text and reference, that the font and font size are both mandatory. At first, I put these as optional using the same defaults as used in Badger Menu. But that creates a situation where it's confusing whether the value is from the Badger Menu item default, the Badger Menu default, or the program calling the Badger Menu class. I therefore remove the default from the Badger Menu item, as it should only ever be initialized from the Badger Menu anyway. I've implemented the get and set selected so that this class is aware of whether or not it's to be highlighted. But note the class is not aware of its location, either through the x, y position or through the position of the columns and rows. Instead, that is passed to the draw method. This means that the badger menu is responsible for managing the layout and the exact position of each item. Similar to how a window manager might work on a GUI application. And so here's the draw method. As you can see, it requires the display to be able to output to there, and it requires the X and Y position. As I've said earlier, it's not self-aware of where it goes without this. Set thickness option used here is a bit redundant. In the older version of the Badger 2040, that could be used to create bold lines, but due to performance reasons, that was dropped for the Badger 2040W. The set thickness does, however, affect some fonts, so it could be used to create bold text. I did try this using the Hershey's fonts, which I did by setting the font to sans or serif. And that did work, but without any bold, the text was very thin. I didn't think it would be visible enough for this video. By increasing the thickness, I could get a reasonable width, but when I tried increasing it to make it bold, then it looked like a kid had written using a felt tip pen. It, it really wasn't that good. So this is the reason I just left the default font to the bitmap 8 font, and I just scaled it to double size. I don't use bold text to indicate which menu is selected, which is what I was thinking of doing. Also, the image isn't implemented here. It's just ignored. This would be drawn here if it was implemented. Then the method does some calculations to determine the position of the text. And depending upon the length of the text, it's either positioned in the center of the button or aligned to the left. You'll see that I commented out some code to measure the height of the text using the glyph method, as that does not appear to be implemented for the MicroPython version of the Badger 2040 to be a libraries. I think it is in the C++ version though, if you were writing in C++. Instead, I used a hard-coded value. It may be useful to look at an alternative way to determine this if using different fonts. That's something that you may look at in future. And then the other thing to be aware of is that this calls the drawbox method, which I'll come on to now. So the drawbox method just creates a rectangle. But when the menu position is selected, it draws double thickness. There is a rectangle method included in the standard display, but that creates a filled rectangle. I could have drawn two rectangles, one filled and one one filled white, but instead I just use lines to create the rectangle manually. So there's the four lines showing the four sides of the rectangle. Originally I hoped to highlight the selected menu by using the set thickness, but as this doesn't work for lines, I decided to create it manually by drawing one rectangle inside the other. And I did this by calling the four lines with uh, 
different x and y positions. I could have simplified this further by creating a separate method to draw a rectangle or to draw the box but for the sake of a few lines of code I just repeated the four lines and just modified the x and y positions slightly. I'll just briefly mention the badger slider. It's not part of the badger menu I created, it just creates a slider which goes across the screen giving a value between the minimum and maximum values. There are quite a few optional parameters to this as I thought it would be useful for other programs. For example, I wanted the larger number on the left and the smaller number on the right, which is the opposite to what's commonly used for a slider. And this is because I'm using it for a delay time. For example, if you wanted to create a temperature control, then you'd probably have the higher temperatures on the right and lower temperature bound on the left. If I was just creating a single menu, it would have been easy to code it just within the app. Creating these as generic menu systems allowed me to handle the two different menu screens easier. The first example here shows a 3x3 menu, which is used by the sequence selection. And the second is a 4x3 menu, which is used for the colour selection. Also in the colour selection, the menu does not occupy the full screen, leaving the line across the bottom to display the selected colours. In this example, R for red, W for white, for blue. In the case of the slider, I've only used it once so far, but it's something I can see myself using for other programs in future. Once the code has been written for this as a class using the object oriented programming, it makes it easier to integrate into other programs. Hopefully this has been useful as an example of creating a menu for the Badger 2040, as well as an explanation of some of the benefits of object oriented programming and designing components for reuse. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please give it a quick thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and click the notification bell icon to get notified of new videos when they're available. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.